The Taliban takeover of most of Afghanistan has alarmed the world. While developments are still unfolding there, it's important to look at what this really means for the region and uh, around Afghanistan and for India. We have with us uh, former ambassador of India to Tajikistan, Belarus and Azerbaijan, uh, Mr. Muthu Kumar. Mr. B.R. Muthu Kumar, welcome to News Click. Uh, sir, can you begin with uh, trying to evaluate the situation for India right now in Afghanistan? Considering the recent statements of the Taliban, uh, do you expect it to change? Ma'am, I'm not so sure what uh, India's position is at the moment because uh, we seem to be very clear that uh, the Taliban is someone that you're not going to deal with. Now, that is a very, very difficult situation if we want to do something in Afghanistan. Taliban must be accepted as another facet of Afghan politics. Afghanistan is a land of minorities. Pashtuns are a minority, the Tajiks are a minority, the Uzbek, everybody is a minority. So it takes two or three uh, communities or ethnic groups to form a majority. Now, that being so, in the land of minority, uh, we must accept the Taliban as a, another facet of politics, Afghan politics. In India also, we have a similar situation where we have politics that are at times difficult to stomach. But nevertheless, that is a facet of our current politics. So if we can accept the current politics in India, we must, there is no harm in accepting uh, politics of Afghanistan what is it's their choice. If they have decided that Taliban are welcome, well, Taliban are forcing themselves, whatever the story be. So what we see after 20 years is that the US has spent $3 trillion almost be it 2.4, 2.3, whatever that, the number is not important, but they spent trillions of dollars to remove Taliban and bring back the Taliban. Now, that is the fact today, and that is the fact we have to accept and, and accept that historical fact also. Now, you cannot, like, for example, I heard someone, clever man, speak in, uh, from Delhi, from our own ministry, saying that it's a, uh, the Taliban are a de facto group. Now, I don't understand that. They are, uh, they are ruling there and you're referring to the de facto group. Now, some way we have to get pragmatic. And pragmatism means that we have something to say or something to play. Actually, at the outset, let me tell you, India has no role in Afghanistan. We are we a have stakes there. There are no do, stakes. Do we not have stakes there? What stakes are you talking about? The assistance that we are given is no stake. It is our assistance program which we have done. They were in need, we gave to them. It's part of the Bonn conference where we assured certain amount of assistance, a developmental assistance. So, so let us not take it as an investment. That is not an investment. It is a developmental process that we participated in Afghanistan. At that time, we started it then. And we very genuinely and correctly went about doing what we can. And as usual, you know, we, are, we like to be given a pat on our back to say that we have done a good job. Yes, we did a good job. But then that should not be a criteria for us to think that it's a leverage for us to play in, uh, play in, in Afghanistan. We have no leverage. There's often talk of India's soft power. Uh, are you saying that doesn't mean anything? And we would have stakes in peace. Ma'am, I, I, very frankly, let me tell you, I do not like to beat around the bush to say, talk about soft power. I do not know what soft power is. The real, what we, have, we must talk about is the real power. Do you have the money power? No. Maybe yes, sometimes for certain occasions. Do you have, a, do you have the, an influence over the Afghans? Let me tell you, zilch. So we are, we are only good boys in the neighborhood who are willing to help. And we have done what we could within our own means, sacrificing our own needs to give the Afghans what we can. We did it. So that is, we can say, yes, India is a good boy, done a good deed. So so we are like in a, in a more, you know, if you have to compare anybody else with us, I think it'd be like Japan, which can only be a do-gooder, keep giving some assistance. If it's useful, useful. 
And if somebody takes over and benefits out of it, fine. Like the Taliban were trying to derive a benefit from the Tsar Ranch, the Ram uh, Highway. They wanted to share on the on the uh, on the the road taxes or whatever you know, a return on that. It was basically uh, highway uh, hunters. So that's it's all right. That Highway 606 or whatever we built it. So even the Taliban wanted. So if they want to benefit out of it, okay, fine. That is why it was never destroyed by the Taliban. So Taliban will also use what is available. Like, for example, the Afghan National Army has very nicely handed over modern equipment to the Taliban. So there are many things that uh, can uh, happen in, uh, in Afghanistan. But nobody, I'll tell you, from, from the time Afghanistan was founded by the, uh, the Duranis till today, nobody can say what will happen in Afghanistan the next minute or the next hour or the next day. We are all educated, informed education we have, informed opinion, certain aspects of history, we co-link some facts, and we try and give some, make some sense to it. But then Afghan, Afghanistan is very much like what we'll call, you know, uh, that what is the Sanskritic word, Afghan uh, stana. So it's a, it's a confused uh, stan or, or, or a board of confusion, or, you know, many, many connotations are there. So that to an extent defines uh, what the situation, and it's all because the foreigners have always interfered in Afghanistan. If foreigners don't invite in, uh, in, uh, interfere in Afghanistan, things may be different. You see, so we have, everybody has been interfering in Afghanistan. They get no chance, they want to do, God knows what it is. How, uh, how worried should India be at least on the twin fronts of narcotics and uh, terrorism now that the Taliban is in control? Man, man, let me tell you one thing. The narcotics trade before 2001, all the opium trade, many things were controlled by the ISI. And that is why the ISI had the clout, the money clout. Now, post-October 2001, there were many actors, and Western Union outlets were open all over Afghanistan, where the economy is in crumbles. But you have the Western Union, where remittances keep coming or remittances keep going. Now, that to an extent, there are many things, many explanations to be given on that. But the important thing is, the ISI have lost control on the drug trade. The Taliban, who were out of the scene, we are also out of the opium trade. Now, who else can you name for the, uh, for the opium trade? So what's happening is lots of NGOs have recycled, what do you call it, laundered drug money for their, their operations. And where some, uh, some places, micro loans have also been given from this laundered money. And then they are paying back quite uh, legit money. So these things are happening in Afghanistan. So, well, the Americans have played a very good game. Now, if anybody has to talk of a drug cartel, we can learn from the Americans. So, so what so does don't this blame actually the Taliban. mean? The Taliban are not... Pardon? Uh, I was going to ask, what does it mean for the region? For example, is this an untrammeled victory for Pakistan? Mm. Like many people are saying, the Pashtuns mm. don't accept the uh, Durand line. Could the problem come home sooner the than Duran, we think? Yes, the Durand line is another issue. But the present day Taliban, it's no brainer to say that the 1994 Taliban are different from the 2021 Taliban. It's a no brainer, very different. More, uh, the late uh, Mullah Omar is also no, no, not much around. His son is there, confused, and there's the only man who has some kind of uh, 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 head on his shoulders is Barada Mullah Marada, yeah? who is the head of the political wing, and he just arrived from Doha a few days ago. So what he says, what he does not do, is what people will watch. But within the Taliban, also we do not know whether he is, has an assured place to lead the Taliban administration. And the Taliban are not trained to administer. So therefore, they are asking the previous government civil servants to come back to office and run and operate or whatever, run the, run the show. But then, so the Taliban of the 1994 and 2021 are very different. 
Like for example, the other day I heard even Mohan Bhagavat talking about giving his assurances on the the Hindutva ideology and so on and so forth. The nun may, may the thing. So if we have accepted that kind of an assurance from our own leaders at home, why not we also accept the assurances given by the the Taliban that you know they'll they'll give the necessary attention to to governance that the women's rights will be absorbed, of course, as per the Sharia. So that is the, that is their lookout. Right. That's their way of managing. We should leave it to them. So I, I get your point, but even in India, not everybody um, agrees with the assurances that are given. And in Afghanistan, that doesn't seem to be the case uh, at all. Ma'am, it is not. It, assurances is something that someone has told you you believe or you don't believe. If you don't believe, do something about it. If you if you believe, then you go along with it, as, uh, as they say you know, in the Bollywood language, tension lene ka ne, tension dene ka. So it depends upon how you look at it. So the important thing is that, that the Taliban are there, that's a reality. Now we have to, to accept that reality and see what is our act and define our act on that basis. But the most important thing in all this is, if we do not accept the Taliban, then if you want to do have a role in, in Afghanistan, you have allies only in the, the opposition to Taliban. Would you like to right. go back to the square one of the Northern Alliance? Or do you want an all-inclusive government, which even uh, Ahmed Shah Massoud's son, Ahmed Massoud, he also wants, while well, they are going to resist, he has vowed to fight, but He's also willing to talk if it's an all-inclusive government. Now, if they are considering those on those lines, and and it is for us to also understand the Afghan point of view, because Afghans can only solve their problem. For us to say, for we have no business in even telling anybody that there must be an all-inclusive government in Afghanistan. Who are we? What local stand do we have on that? Can anybody tell us that we must have a government, all-inclusive government, and uh, that does not violate human rights, that issues are not taken to the UN, uh, United Nations, the issues are not taken to the Human Rights ICA, Mr. No, can, we, can anybody dictate us those things? We don't accept it. So like, why, why must we dictate or keep staying redundant statements like, well, you know, we want an all-inclusive government. Mind your own business first, mind your home, Look after your people, look after the people's welfare, then talk, think about something else. If they need help, they'll call you. Right. So uh, do you see a greater scope for cooperation, at least among the neighbors of Afghanistan? Because, uh, you know, now the U.S. is no longer in the picture. And uh, would, 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 not, would not the U.S. also understand that their exit and the Taliban takeover affects Russia, China, Iran, uh, perhaps India, uh, much more than it affects them. Ma'am, uh, to say that the US have exited is a matter of perception. The present day Taliban, Taliban is very much playing and hand in hand, in hand with the US. Otherwise, the U.S. would not have handed over the country to them the way they did. They are, they are definitely consulting each other. They are uh, much, much of collaborators. If anybody says it is not so, maybe uh, they are just blind to, or chose to be blind, or choose to be blind. So that is the thing. The U.S. is very much there, and they want, this. They want a hold there. And uh, like if the 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 Afghans, the Taliban is saying just they made a statement saying that beyond 31st, there's no question of extending the U.S. presence. Now, even the Taliban cannot stop the U.S. presence in, in uh, Afghanistan. If they were, want to stay, they'll stay there. You see, right. the, the, the Americans are very much like this magician Houdini. You know, put them into any locks, they'll break the lock and be there and then still be playing ball. Right. Would the Indian establishment, the Indian state try to milk what's happening in Taliban for their domestic political interest? No, ma'am. No? No, we, no Why not? not at all. 
I mean, if we compare with what happened with uh, Myanmar, um, you know, there was a refugee crisis which became a political issue and a social issue in India. Ma'am, you know, in Myanmar, there is what is it's an issue there because the Muslims are being persecuted in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. in, in, in Afghanistan, Muslims are going after Muslims who are not following the Sharia. So it's a two different uh, uh, games. Now, what, how we can, maybe we can influence the, uh, the, uh, the Myanmaris or Burmese in many uh, issues, if we, wherever we think we can play a card. But with the Afghans, we can do nothing. The Afghans will play their own game. They'll call the shots. If they went, as I said, when they want any help from, from, from India, they will come to us. The question of we trying to derive a mileage from the Taliban. The Taliban, of course, will come to us. On their own, they will come. The moment it gets too hot with Pakistan, the only alternate is to find their old friend, India. Pashtuns have always been friendly to India. Even uh, taking the Taliban also, you know, by and large, they all have some affection for India. They're not anti-India. I will not say if anybody says the Taliban is anti-India, uh, we have not yet seen that aspect of it. It's the certain drive of the Islam, Islamic forces that is taking its own course. In the, the Afghans per se are not anti-Indian and that we must accept. And in that process, even Taliban are Afghans, so we must accept certain aspects of their thinking. And you must remember this now, that the Taliban today are not controlled by Pakistanis. I think we are always emphasizing that the Pakistanis are controlling the Taliban. Absolutely not. Because the Pakistanis do not have the resources. They just do not have the resources to, to sort of uh, get their... Uh, their agenda fulfilled by the Taliban. Even if it's to pay $65 per month to a Taliban, Pakistan cannot afford that, that kind of uh, payment. And there are 80,000 uh, Taliban, calculated, multiplied even at, at $50 per month. Pakistan can't afford that kind of a payroll, you know, and it does not have the resources by way of funds coming from drugs or anything. They lost it all out. There are others who are operating it, and the Americans have left it, and they have left their agents behind, who will keep running that operation. So the, uh, the drug money is out. So Pakistan playing any major role? No. That is why you'll find everybody is opposed to the, the Taliban are, are in Islamabad uh, looking for employment. Like, for example, Kanuni is there in Islamabad. Wali Masood, Masood, bro, younger brother, he was there. The other brother, he was also there. Uh, Karim Khalili is there. Mahakik. All these fellows, that uh, two Azara, they all went there for employment. Why are they there? Pakistan is talking to them. They can't talk to the Taliban. Taliban are not interested in talking to Pakistan today. To say that Pakistan has con full control over the Taliban is some kind of a, a myth. It was in 94, maybe. When, uh, when ISI was cash rich. Today, Pakistan economy is in doldrums. They have no, we, we, it's like, you know, uh, in India, we say somebody will call you up and say, PM desires, this has to be done. Now, who will call up the prime minister and say the PM desires? Eh? So you have that similar situation here that, you know, the, the Pakistanis constantly Im imagine and pretend that they control the 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 Taliban and we think it is true. Taliban so are even their Afghanistan, own today. Even Afghanistan has uh, no money, so would it need a lot of support and assistance from its neighbors, which brings up the question of recognition sometime in the future? Madam, thanks to WTO, today a country does not need much foreign exchange reserve. The man who wants to sell TV will sell TV even in Afghanistan. The man who wants to sell refrigerator will keep selling. The MNC is a wonderful way of uh, conducting international trade. We are, uh, we are naive to think that, you know, you need money to do trade. You can't get food in, in Kinshasa, maybe, in Zaire, Congo. But you can get the best of TVs, the best of cars you can get. How does it come? So if you see even in Kabul, the kind of cars that are there, 
traders are there who who find a way out to to developmental money is what is not there and even in that given situation in afghanistan every afghan will try and be a success and will be a success afghanistan may not be a success afghans by sheer grit their own resilience will live no thanks to the government or no thanks to taliban which we have seen for the last 20 years and of course okay. everybody is everybody says that uh, the leaders have run away with the money yes some have run away some have run away with the money because they need the money the milk cow is dead so whatever they could have milked they want to take it away they have taken so a new lot will come to to find another new milk cow and and keep milking okay thank you thank you very much for joining us and thank you for watching news clip thank you very much ma'am Thank <laughs> you.